Red Thread Cafe is about drinking deeply of life, about having little mini rests, Sabbaths, that you choose to take for yourself. It is a huge part of my spiritual and creative practice and something I also share with members of my community and my family. It was taught to me as a young child by my parents, my mom, Karen McLeod, and Sue Sellers. Sue would bring her notebook, she called her journal her notebook, because she would make her notes in it all through her life, but particularly every morning. And in fact, we have 40 years of notebooks that uh, Sue created that we're sifting through that include image and word. Red Thread Cafe is a sacred practice that allows you to bring yourself into alignment with yourself each day. There are many different ingredients. There's really no rules. And I thought I would share a little bit about how it works for me and invite you into that yourselves because it may be something that is a blessing to you. I know for me it is nothing short of life saving and how I stay connected to my own creative fire. First, just to say that the red thread is a symbol we use that has many legends and one of them is that those who are supposed to be connected are connected by an invisible red thread since before birth. That it will stretch or tangle, but it won't break or unravel unless that relationship or situation is complete. So that is the inspiration behind the Red Thread Cafe. It's about connection, connection to self and to others. One of the things that changes how I approach my life is the thought of going to bed with knowing the Red Thread Cafe is coming in the morning. Of course, you can have Red Thread Cafe anytime, but usually it's in the morning. I've just gotten out of my shower. I have my prayer shawl. Um, you have a cup of tea or coffee. And you set this time aside. It's a time to pray, a time to meditate, a time to study, inquire, to read and recite poetry, to journal, to sketch, to be with the Creator, to sit with the Blessed Mother. And there are many different ways of working with it that are personal, but often it includes uh, prayer shawls, blankets, lighting candles and reading materials. This is a time of spirit, but also a time of, of intellect, of looking at things that you've been interested in, magazines or books that you've put aside, things that will help you develop your consciousness and have you go down what we call down the rabbit hole in cafe. Jonathan and I will often open up um, a book on Rumi or quantum physics or the field and we'll start to read until we get sparked by something and then that will cause us to get another book and then that will cause us to look up something online or to think of a particular song or to begin to write spontaneous poetry. During cafe uh, one of us may say okay time for spontaneous poetry 10 minutes let's see what is revealed and then we often share that. Sketching out of ideas, concepts, things that seem intangible that we try to bring into form through uh, writing and drawing. Having your phone on during cafe is not an option. Like it may feed a phone. So it's a time that's sort of away from technology unless that technology actually really serves what it is you're looking at or for. So that might be, you know, again, a song or a video, but it's about it being connected and you follow the red thread down the rabbit hole and see where it takes you. This time for us is often minimum of half an hour, can go up to two hours if we have time and get up early enough, or if we're really lucky and we have a day off or a Sabbath, it could actually go all day long. It's where your mind and your heart and your body take you. And what's amazing is that what happens for me in cafe 
is what I bring to everything that I'm doing. It's how my content is continually renewed and blessed and inspired and provoked because what happens in the cafe is what I write on and what I paint on and what informs everything else. It's a time for a deep dive into the mystery and most of all, just a time to slow down and be with yourself. Everything that I create in my life comes out of the space of this cafe. So I wanted to tell you a little bit more about where that came from and invite you to it and say that growing up, having parents and elders sit with me like that really changed the way my whole consciousness works. And uh, imagine being able to do this with your husband, your wife, at holidays, and with your children and grandchildren. You will not believe the joy that the little ones have through having this time with you where you're not trying to um, get anywhere or teach anything or pass on any information. You're just being with yourself and them and your loved one. So um, this is the invitation to join me in this movable feast, the Red Thread Cafe. I have it everywhere I go and there's usually a moment where I have Jonathan take a picture or I take a selfie, selfie, I document and send it to my friends or send it to the cafe. And it's sharing this little um, sweet secret sauce of honoring the creative fire. So get a journal, pull out some books from that bookcase, light a candle, put on your blanket or your shawl, and do a deep dive into the mystery and follow the red thread where it leads you. Blessings. This is Shyla Sophia with a little broadcast, hopefully um, just one that could be a blessing. Just try it. Try a couple mornings and see what happens for you.